to us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Okay, so for about 15 or 20 minutes, I, the topic that I want to speak on this morning is you can walk by faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says what? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. God, we know there's a God. Do we know that there is a master builder, architect, and designer of this whole world? The heavens, the stars, and the moon, and the sun declare that there is a what? A God, a supreme being. We're, and, and he says, without faith, it's impossible to please this supreme being. He that cometh to God, this supreme being, must believe that what? He is. And that he is a what? A rewarder to those that what? Diligently seek him. And God, I mean, he, he's all wisdom. He knows everything. But so many of us want to try to do life by ourselves. And what did that do? It gets us in a lot mess, trouble. Now Hebrews 11, 1, in the NLT, it says faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Faith is the confidence. Faith in the conf is the confidence. The confidence in a God that we have never seen. Confident that there is a master builder, an architect, and designer of everything. Confident. He has given us his word, right? He has given us a manual to go by. He has given us the Holy Spirit when we got born again. The Spirit of God came into us. He's, not, he's here with us and what? In us. The Holy Spirit. He says, so, so now faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. You've heard the saying that seeing is believing. Yeah, we just talk about seeing is believing. Seeing is believing. Well, that's right. That's wrong. See, most of us live based on what we can see. Most people uh, live based on what they see. You know we do that. But what, they walk by what? Sight. The Bible tells us not to walk by sight, but walk by what? Faith. Uh, you know, the five senses, they are for this world. You know what I'm saying? Because we got this, we walk by what we see, and we're not going to walk out there in the highway with a car. Uh, you know, we're not going to go across the railroad track when we hear the whistle blowing. You know. So those five senses are for him. But now those of us that are in the kingdom of God have another sense that we walk by when it comes pertain to God. Think about this. Now, have you ever tried to walk blindfolded? You know, have you ever walked in around the, just, just, you're just doing something for fun to close your eyes and see can you walk? Which way, seeking you find your way. You know, that was kind of hard, wasn't it? It was, uh, it didn't feel natural. And it's not natural to walk without looking where we're going. But yet, that is specifically what Paul advocated when he wrote, for we walk by faith, not by what? 
That's 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. The just shall live by what? Faith. He's telling us to justify. We as born again believers, we got to live, we got to uh, live by faith. So, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. The things that are seen, seen are temporary. But the things that are unseen are eternal. See, as far as we looking in the word of God, we, and I like to use this as an example, we're looking in the word of God. We're standing on that word for our healing. Are we standing on the word of God, what he says for our relationships? On the word of God for our children. On the word of God, standing on the word. We done got a word now out of this, what he says. And we're standing on that. But while we're standing on that, we cannot look at the situation. We cannot continue to keep our eyes on them acting like a fool. We got to say what the word says about it. Keep our eyes on what the word says about our relationships. Keep our eyes on what the word said about our jobs, our increase. You see what I'm saying? You got word for that. Paul knew the reality that when we walk by faith, we are being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That's a definition for Hebrews 11, 1, about faith. I believe Paul wants us to fully understand the importance of trusting God rather than our senses. Uh, yeah, we got to trust God. What did he say about that situation of yours? What did he say about that situation? What did he say about that circumstance? You done found the word in here because the Bible said this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his what? His word, his will, he what? Hear us. Now, if we know that he hear us, then we should know that we have the what? The petition. petition that we desire for him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You got to get that in you. Uh -huh. You can't keep looking at what they're doing or what they're not doing or the, you know, how the relationship going and, you know, what my job is doing and saying, I'm looking to God because promotion does not come from the, the, the east or the west, but promotion comes from who? The Lord. Now, faith is a key. Faith is an essential key to a successful life. See, Jesus came so that we could have life and have it more what? Abundantly. Now, faith is the key to a successful life. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, everything is possible for him who what? Believes. Believes in what? Believes in God. Believes in his word. Our faith is meant to unlock things that are seemingly impossible and open the door to receiving our full inheritance from God. Do you hear what I'm saying right here? See, some of, I want to get everything that Jesus died that I supposed to have. You know. But without faith, you're not going to get it. Because he, he's done given us everything that pertains to life. He done did all he's going to do. So now we got to learn how to walk in this word by faith so that we can pull down the things that Jesus has died so we can have. Uh, you know, all the benefits. Yes, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and the Savior, you got saved. But there's benefits to this salvation while you still here on earth. You know, some of, some of people are not going to partake of that. Why? They're just going to get saved, and that's going to be it. They're not going to try to learn. That's, after you get saved, this is the best of part of your Christian uh, life. Do this to learn everything that God has for you, to learn more and more about Jesus. 
He said, take my yoke upon you and what? Learn of me. Learn everything. It's benefits that come with salvation. Benefits that come with salvation. That if you keep living out there in the world, you're not going to get them. Now, getting faith. There is only one way to get faith. Romans 10 and 17 says, so faith comes by what? And hearing by the word of God. That's it. There are no shortcuts. See, as, as you are you here today and you listen to me, faith is coming in your heart. That's the only way you go. And, 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 and you got to get this word. You got to, you got to hear more than one a little meal, but don't you eat more than just one time a day? See, a lot of times our spirits are so dry because we ain't got no, that's what the, the word is what uh, uh, builds your spirit up, makes us a strong man, get your faith going. The word of God does that. You don't hear, if you don't hear no word during the day, you don't read the word, you don't listen to no word, uh, your spirit man is dry, you, you, you are you are causing your spirit man to be in famine. And so you're going to walk by sight more. So your faith is meant to unlock things that are seemingly impossible. Like I said, there's only one way to get faith, and that's by hearing the word of God and hearing and hearing and hearing. See, a lot of times we just can't hear it one time. You got to keep hearing that. Because we, we still got residue in our mental area that says we're going to do uh, uh, things like we used to do it. If, if something come up, the, the, the grid says handle it the, the way you used to do it before you got saved. But see, we got to get the word in us. First, God gives us a promise in his word that is relevant to our circumstance. That's what I said. Second, we believe the promise. Third, we take a step of faith and obey God by doing what his word says. Faith is not passive, it's active and many of God's promises are conditional. We receive the benefit of his, his part only when we do our part. Okay. Example. The word of God tells us to meditate in his word day and night then you will see how to make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. So success is not going to come until you do that. Your part, what's your part? What is your part? To meditate in that word day and night. To meditate in that word day and night. That's what he told Joshua. First Psalm says, hey, if you meditate in the word day and night, you will be like a what? A tree. Planted by the rivers of waters that'll bring forth your fruit in your season. Your leaf shall not wither. I don't care when it's famine, your leaf gonna still stay green. That means you're gonna still be going forth. And then he said, Whatsoever you do shall prosper. Do you hear what I'm saying up in here? Whatever you do shall prosper. I take it on some things now. And hey, I said, Hey, we're gonna prosper with this right here. Because why? Because I'm believing God to prosper the endeavor that I put my hands to. Because why? I'm meditating the word day and night. See? So you, you got to take a step of faith and obey God by doing what his word says do. Just like for tithing. He said bring your tithes into the storehouse and then what? Then he going to bless you. He going to open up the windows of heaven. Rebuke the devour for your sake. So you got to do your part and then he'll do his part. God has called us to a higher way than walking by what we can see. Do you realize? We as born again believers can walk different than the world walks. And, 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 and he says, trust in the Lord. With all thine heart. And lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall do what? He going to direct your path. That means you got to uh, uh, 
Acknowledge him in all your ways. Pray about everything. He's concerned about every little thing that bothers you. He's concerned about, Lord, if you're going to, to the store to buy you an outfit or whatever. He's concerned about that. Lord, show me which one is the best for me, this, that, and other. I mean, he's, 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 he's uh, interested in everything. David wrote, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. His word. That's Psalms 119, verse 105. Everyone needs God's direction and guidance. Do you hear what I said? Everyone needs God's direction and guidance. Without it, we wander aimlessly on the road of life. Good God, I'm sorry. On the road of life. If you don't have God's direction, you just out here wandering around just like a wandering star. Mm -hmm. And that's what some people do all their lives. They wander around, just wander around all their life, never accomplish anything, never doing anything, never using the gifts and talents and abilities that God has placed in them. See, I want to use up everything God placed in me. I want to partake of everything that God says I can have, that Jesus died for. Yeah. Jesus died so that, hey, that you could increase and do better. Jesus died so that you could walk in health and healing. Jesus died so you could do that. It has given us authority and power. And I like that this right here. See, Jesus has already done the struggling for us. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's already done the struggling for us. He had to fight and defeat every demon in hell to secure the benefits of our redemption. Do you hear what I said right there? He had to fight and defeat every demon in hell to secure the benefits of our redemption. He went to hell and back for us. Took the keys of death and hell from the devil. Made an open show in front of all his homies. Now, he had to struggle in Gethsemane and overcome his own will. Because you remember whenever he was out there in Gethsemane praying and the Bible said he was struggling so hard that he began to sweat blood? He said, God, if it be any other way. Oh, good God from Zion. He said, if it be any other way, God. That was his, you know, he struggled against his will right then. But then he said, not my will, but your will be done. Good God from Zion. He had to battle sin, shame, and death itself to purchase our victory. And we're going to walk around here like the devil steal and take everything we got. Good. Not here. Not here. We got to get serious about this walk that, with Jesus Christ. Do you hear what I'm saying? We got to get serious about his word. Get, get serious about what he put in us, what he's doing. That you ain't got to look like no, uh, what's the thing I want to say? Goofball. You know how some folks get saved and they just goofy. I ain't talking about, he didn't come to give us religion. You hear know what I'm saying? He didn't come to give us religion, these religious folk. Can't even talk to you with, without going off in tongues or something. <laughs> hey, be, 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 be real. Did, if you ever read the New Testament, did Jesus do that? He could, he could even go in there and sit down and talk to sinners. And come out just like, still Jesus. Pharisees got to talking about, oh, he's a wine bimper. He's this. He's, he's over there at that liquor house. 
He just go and look out and talk to folk. And come on back out. You got to show him. He said, those that are sick, they need a physician. And see, you can get so in tune with God, so in tune with God. If God tells you that, uh, uh, to go somewhere, you can walk in there. And a lot of times, if you're so in tune to God, if you walk in a place where there's a lot of demons, them folks will straighten up. Yeah, yeah. He had to battle sin, shame, and death itself to purchase our victory. The struggle is over, people. Jesus finished it. So all we got to do is press in and get it. Do you hear what I'm saying here? Because the devil is not going to let you. He's going to talk to you just like he did Eve. He's going to keep talking to your mind and tell you, oh, you can't have this. Or you'll never be anything. You know what I'm saying? And he keep talking to you like that. Or you can't have this. You can't be this. Uh, you come from the wrong side of the track. You the wrong color. You this and you that. He gonna keep talking to you. He will talk to you. So now, there's a lot more stuff out here that y'all young folk got to press up against to, to come on out. Because you got all this social media here. You see what I'm saying? And you get on that and you look at that and, and they, those folk out there trying to put their best foot forward, they ain't got that stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to know that they ain't doing nothing but putting you on. Mm -hmm. They ain't even got this. Some of them will get over there and flash the money around like that. That's probably play money. And if, if there is real money, they ain't got none. They ain't got it like that. Bronson and all some money one time that looked just like real money. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can buy that stuff and flash it all out there on the social media. And see, it is good, young folk, that you got somebody in your family that's saved, that can tell you the right way to go and let you look out for stuff like that. Because, I, you know, I've been young. I know you're young. I gave you all the benefit of the doubt. But the Holy Spirit will talk to you. Now let me tell you about God. God is faithful. Deuteronomy 7 9 says, Know therefore that the Lord, your God, is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. Faithful means that God is reliable, God is trustworthy. He's reliable and he's trustworthy. You can trust in God. You can, you, can, you can take his word to the bank. He's not a liar. Don't let the devil fool you out there. Glory to God. Don't let the devil fool you. So right now, I thank God for this word. And in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor right now. We thank you for this word, Father. Thank you, God. 